It is a belief structure that obviously comes from Jeremiah Wright. Where did he get it from? From the author of liberation theology, James Cone. The only way in which your repentance, your forgiveness can be, can be authentic, your reception of it can be authentic, your repentance can be authentic, is that you give back what you took. And white people took a lot from black people. This is why America is confused. What Americans can't get their arms around is that for the first time we have a president that believes in collective salvation, that believes that the U.S. is the oppressor and Islam in this case is the victim, but just one of many victims from the big bad oppressor, the United States of America. That's what's happening. Don't be confused by this. Don't, don't confuse this with he's a Muslim. I don't believe he is. You have to learn his theology, learn his influences, learn who he surrounded himself with his whole life. More knowledge, not less. More access to information, not less. You see, it's all about victims and victimhood. Oppressors and the oppressed. Reparations, not repentance. Or repentance. Collectivism, not individual salvation. I don't know what that is other than... Uh, it's not Muslim. It's, it's not Christian. It's, it is a perversion of the gospel of Jesus Christ as most Christians know it. But as usual, the media won't look at any of those facts because most people in the media don't have any idea what Christianity really is. They would just rather disparage, mock, and ridicule anyone who has any kind of doubt or differing opinion from their Messiah. Bob Schieffer, you seem like a nice gentleman. I don't know you, and I'm sure you are a good journalist. I don't know because I don't watch CBS News, and quite frankly, I don't know anybody who does. But it's not the internet that has caused these problems. It is the president's own actions, his own beliefs, and the lack of journalists who lack the integrity to the craft that created this nightmare. Oh, and one last point here. I showed you where most people heard where they thought that rumor, you know, that Barack Obama was a Muslim from TV. It was followed by Barack Obama's own words. And the very bottom of the list, where did that, where did that hateful misunderstanding come from? The very bottom of the list, coming in and with a whopping one percent, came in from that demon media seed, talk radio. From Washington D.C. All this week, um, welcome to the program. Yesterday, I showed you the president's favorite website and how they uh, um, pulled out the underutilized liar, liar, pants on fire argument to make the claim that I was somehow or another being hypocritical on the ground zero Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf. It's some of the worst reporting I've, I've ever seen. Um, and that's saying something. I mean, have you picked up the Washington Post lately? Oof. Anyway, I never endorsed this Imam, uh, and I've never condemned this uh, Imam. What I've said is there are some highly questionable statements surrounding this man that should be looked into before he's allowed to build a mosque a block away from Ground Zero or, for that matter, in Kansas. It seems like a reasonable request. I just want answers, but, um, but no, 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 nobody in the media wants to do that. We're just being told, shut up, even though it doesn't add up. The administration wants you to believe that this Imam Raul uh, is uh, busy being an ambassador for the United States around the globe on taxpayer money, and that's totally normal. While he's doing that, the wife of this Imam is back home in the United States on national television saying that all Americans hate Muslims. Shouldn't we find out if this uh, ambassador, what he thinks about that claim from his wife? And then we have this. Here's the latest. A speech given by Raouf in 2005. It's just been uncovered. And here's what the America-loving ambassador had to say. We tend to forget in the West that the United States has more Muslim blood on its hands 
and Al-Qaeda has on its hands of innocent non-Muslims. Hmm. I wonder who has more blood on their hands of Muslims, us or Al-Qaeda? You, you see this? America is worse than Al-Qaeda. Sounds like he kind of agrees with his wife, doesn't it? So it should come as no surprise that opposition to the Ground Zero Mosque has risen from 60 to from 54 percent to 62 in just the last couple of days. The opposition isn't growing because Americans hate Muslims. It's because we're using common sense. It's growing because this particular Muslim seems to be connected to people who hate America. Regular people are looking at this issue with common sense. You get it. You get that Muslims have a right to build a mosque next to Ground Zero or any place they want to. You just question the wisdom of it, but more importantly, you realize that the building of this mosque isn't about location. It is about what this mosque may stand for. Who's building this mosque? Where are they getting the money? What is their motive for building it by Ground Zero? You get it. But right outside this window is the Capitol. Now, they don't get it. Politicians don't get it. You've got Governor Patterson meeting today to talk about the mosque. He's renewed his offer to, uh, to give state assistance to the project's developers if they care to move. Well, let me ask you something. How does changing the location of a mosque that may be dangerous answer any of the concerns raised by this imam's questionable comments? How? Is it better somehow to have the guy who says America's worse than Al-Qaeda 15 blocks away as opposed to four? The question shouldn't be where to build this mosque. It should be, do we build it in the first place with these people? Patterson doesn't get it. Bloomberg doesn't get it. Bloomberg has greenlit this project at the same time he's out there in the media eloquently defending the right of Muslims to build a mosque, which no one is arguing with. I mean, have they built any mosques since, since September 11th? Have there been any mosques? Because I haven't heard anybody screaming and yelling about it. It's this one. While he's doing that, he's not going to support a Greek Orthodox church efforts to rebuild their church, St. Nicholas Church. The only house of worship destroyed in the September 11th attacks. Destroyed. The city hasn't been able to get that one done in 10 years. But they have no problem voting 9-0 to zero to support a $100 million mosque that no one knows where the money is coming from. And the imam and his wife have a habit of making anti-American comments. No problem with that. Whoa, whoa, St. Nicholas. Who is this St. Nicholas guy? Excuse me. They also don't have a problem supporting a small Christian group called the Bronx Household of Faith. You'd think the small Christian group that's just been trying to find a meeting place, been trying to rent out a vacant space in a school building on the weekends, you'd think the city would have no problem saying, okay. No, city says absolutely not. They are supposed to let anyone use that space so long as their purpose is pertaining to the welfare of the community, end quote. They've literally been in and out of court fighting this small group of Christians for 15 years. But the city is going to give money and incentives to build this mosque if they'll move it. Something's not right. People opposing the mosque don't need to be investigated, like Nancy Pelosi says. Here, here's, here's, here's what you're going to find. They're using common sense. Oh, sure, there are a few people who are dummies, but most of Americans just using their gut and common sense. It's those in charge that seem to be putting an agenda ahead of common sense. Maybe they should be investigated. Man, I have an idea. If we could just find someone in the media that wasn't compliant. More on that and the agenda next.
America. We're from Washington, D.C. all week where in, what is it, four days, four days from now, I'm going to be speaking at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. It has been made controversial by so many people. It is not controversial. No one knows what's even on the entire agenda. In fact, my staff didn't even know until I laid it all out for them last night. They were getting a little concerned. Glenn, Glenn, we can't tie all this together. We don't know how it all works. So I had a private meeting with them last night to tie it all together. I have kept it under wraps because I find it extraordinarily interesting how the media just makes it into some nightmare when they have no idea what's even happening. Don't you miss it Saturday here in Washington. And uh, it will explain this, what I'm wearing, and you'll see it down here on right there. This is actually the original Purple Heart. It was the Badge of Merit, only discovered in 1933. It turned into the Purple Heart, but it was originally made by George Washington. We'll explain a little later on. Now, we're seeing all kinds of public policy that is at odds with common sense and the American people. Um, when it comes to building this mosque, where's the funding come from? Who's leading this mosque? If you say anything, it apparently you just hate Muslims. Really. Why would the government be blindly supportive of this mosque and have a pattern of blocking Christian churches and Christian groups? I came across this story today in the New York Post, also from New York. Here it is. Um, the um, uh, state uh, test makers are now slamming Christianity and lauding Islam. There it is. Now, I went immediately and I got the test. This is from... This is for teachers only, so I have all the answers. Kids. Um, this is the actual test that they give to students in New York. I wanted to see if the evidence supports this crazy headline. Well, here are the actual lines from the actual test now given in New York. First, in a section on Muslims called a world history, a cultural approach. High school students tests read like this, quote, wherever they went, the Muslims brought with them their love of art, beauty, and learning. From about the 8th to the 11th century, their culture was superior in many ways to that of Western Christendom. Nearly every mosque had a public school in which the children of the poor were taught. Many Muslim libraries were excellent. The catalogs of one of the caliphs library filled 40 volumes. In addition, the followers of Muhammad achieved much in science, particularly in chemistry, astronomy, mathematics, and medicine. Oh, well, that sounds, that sounds delicious, doesn't it? It sounds like it's all sunshine and lollipops. But let's now look how the Christians fared in the same test from New York City schools and New York State schools. You ready? An excerpt from the listing of the common procedures used by Christians and the friars to introduce Christianity in Latin America states, quote, idols, temples, and other material evidences of paganism destroyed. Christian buildings often constructed with sites of, onto sites of destroyed native temples in order to symbolize and emphasize the substitution of one religion by the other. Mm. It kind of sounds like the Ground Zero Mosque. Indians supplied construction labor without receiving payment. Maybe all the government officials in New York fighting the Christians and supporting Ground Zero Mosque simply just went to public schools. Maybe that's what answered this. I want to go to David Barton. We were having this conversation yesterday before this story broke. He is the founder and president of Wall Builders. David also has a DVD collection uh, called the uh, American Heritage Series, which is excellent. David. Gee, has this ever happened before? In first of all, tell me what's tell me what's happening here in America with the textbooks. Well, uh, there's a lot happening in this direction. This has been about ten years we've been watching this. There is actually a group in America called the Council on Islamic Education. It is their task to affect textbooks, and they say their founder says we are undertaking a bloodless revolution in the classrooms of America's junior high and high school students. So we literally have this revolution underway. We've been watching this for a number of years. Uh, there is a great center in, in Los Angeles, the, the Center for Jewish Policy, who keeps up with, with how this is treated and the way that the textbooks treat Islam versus the way they treat Judaism or Christianity. Really clear. That's a perfect example of what's out there. Okay.